Live from the Ball State News Center, this is News Link Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to News Link Indiana. I'm Andrew Sanders. And I'm Rebecca Brumfield. Thanks for joining us. We have breaking news. Marco Rubio has officially dropped out of the presidential campaign after a defeat in his home state to Donald Trump. It really began back in 2007, 2008, Marco! with this horrifying Marco! downturn. Marco! Don't worry, we're, you won't get beat up at our event. We, uh, people are very frustrated about the direction of our country. We, uh, thank you. People are frustrated. In 2007 and 2008, there was a horrible downturn in our economy. And these changes to our economy that are happening are disrupting people's lives. After Rubio's announcement, for some, it is more like Survival Tuesday. Voters in Missouri, Illinois, North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida are weighing in on the presidential race today. CNN's Karen Kaifa has more really began back in 2007, 2008, Marco! with this horrifying downturn. Marco! Run for Don't worry, we're, you won't get beat up at our... The Ball State debate team returns from across the country with a victory. The team came away with a national team championship at Fullerton College in California. This is the debate team's eighth overall win in nationals. Fullerton College was hoping to beat Ball State's significantly smaller team, but came away in second place. This photo was taken at the college in California on Saturday after the award ceremony. Debate team coach Michael Bauer said that the team performed at an amazing level after working hard and giving up their spring break. Monroe County health officials confirmed new mumps in Bloomington outside of Indiana University. There have been 14 confirmed mumps cases in Monroe County as of March 11th. At least eight cases were reported at IU by the end of February, and several other universities in the state have reported mumps outbreaks on campus. No links have been found connecting the confirmed cases at IU and outside of the university. Health officials are urging families to check their vaccination records and get the recommended doses of vaccine. Students returning to classes yesterday were shocked to discover one of Ball State's beloved statues is missing. Newsling's Robert Segovia went to reach out to students to get to the bottom of the disappearance of Frog Baby. Students returned from spring break for classes on Monday, but a popular Ball State attraction stayed on vacation. The Frog Baby statue was sculpted by Edith Barreto Stevens Parsons and cast in 1937. It was donated to the university by Frank Ball, and resided in the David Owsley Museum of Art, where students would rub Frog Baby's nose for good luck on exams. In 1993, after successful restoration, she was placed in the middle of a fountain to the north of Bracken Library. She is also given costumes for different seasons and dressed up for football games or other events on campus. I talked to students about Frog Baby's disappearance and what she means to Ball State. So I didn't really know that uh, Frog Baby was missing. I'm a commuter student, so I'm only in two days a week. But it was definitely shocking to find out. I don't really know how that would have happened. I know that they keep very close watch over her, so I'm surprised that, you know, knowing that they have security cameras and things, that nothing is known about what happened. Uh, Frog Baby means a lot to Ball State. Um, really, a lot of the students here just view her as a student herself. We dress her up during the winter to keep her warm and we try to give her as much school spirit as possible. Frog Baby was not there when students passed the fountain as a water line is being repaired and the statue will be reinstalled when it is finished. In Muncie, Robert Segovia, Newslink, Indiana. It's reassuring to know that Frog Baby is safe and will return to her fountain soon. Now, I know when I woke up this morning, it was absolutely drowsy outside. It was kind of raining on the way to classes, and by the middle of the day, it was, it was sunshiny, it was warm, it, I mean, it was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was a very great day, but I hear that we might be in for a little bit worse weather on the way soon. Oh, Nick, no. could you tell us a little bit about that? 
Well, as you can see, the storms, they are going to be on the way, but it's going to take a little bit of time until these storms uh, make their way into Indiana. And this has been the whole story of the day today. I know the saying, beauty and the beast, the day was beautiful today, but the beast is on its way. As you can see right now, Muncie's in the marginal risk. Marginal means that there's a slight chance of severe weather, primarily, primarily, excuse me, the threat is going to mostly be um, hail and damaging winds. But if we start to push more outward, even into uh, near Peoria, they've actually had a couple reports of tornadoes. As you can see right now, we have a couple tornado watches that are going to remain in effect until 4 a.m. in the morning for uh, most of central and northern Illinois. We actually can even see those black dots. Those represent tornado warnings that are going to continue for the next 45 minutes. Now, coming up later in the broadcast, I'll let you know when the arrival of these storms will happen, along with cooler temps. And I'll let you know about that weekend forecast coming up later on. Guys. Coming up after the break, we've got the latest on the sentencing of a Muncie murderer. And find out about an upcoming charity event at Muncie Central High School, next. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Police arrested a Muncie man on the scene of a meth lab, even though he says it wasn't his. 25-year-old Dustin Norris says his meth lab is located across town. Police arrived at Norris's Dartmouth home and searched the inside and garage. Police found a plate with a rolled up dollar bill, tablets, hypodermic needles, and a one-pot meth lab. The police report found the meth lab in a toolbox in a relative's truck parked at the relative's house. Norris was taken to Delaware County Jail for five and six level crimes dealing with drugs. The woman in the bedroom with Norris was also jailed for possession. A Muncie man has been sentenced to 25 years in prison today after being convicted of what a judge called a brutal, vicious, and callous killing. A Delaware Circuit Court 5 jury on February 25th found Juan Hernandez guilty of voluntary manslaughter in January 2015, slaying of Mark Hitson. According to testimony, Hernandez stabbed Hitson 23 times. The jury also found Hernandez guilty of battery with a deadly weapon for the injuries that Hitson's wife suffered trying to defend her husband. Alpha Delta Kappa held a ceremony today inducting new members into their organization. Newslink Indiana reporter Bree Isom has more. Alpha Delta Kappa Collegiate Club, a chapter specializing in supporting the teaching profession, installed 25 new members today at the Alumni Center at Ball State University. Chloe Woodruff, president of Alpha Delta Kappa Collegiate Club, explains how she brought this chapter to Ball State. I wanted to bring Alpha Delta Kappa um, to Ball State because I felt like we needed an educational organization that also connected us with people after graduation that we could join and I think Alpha Delta Kappa Collegiate Club is amazing because after graduation we can join 
the um, ADK International Club, where we can network with people for the rest of our lives. Ruth Ann Griggs spoke about the values the chapter holds. Griggs also explains why she is excited that Ball State is welcoming the chapter of Alpha Delta Kappa. I'm the international president for Alpha Delta Kappa. And we're so excited today to charter the newest and the only collegiate club. It starts at Ball State University. We are just thrilled to have these um, educators to be forming this club and be starting a new chapter in the life of Alpha Delta Kappa. Alpha Delta Kappa will help future educators at Ball State stay connected with the teaching community. In Muncie, Bree Isom, Newslink, Indiana. Ball State is very excited to introduce this new organization to help future teachers prepare students to meet the challenges of an everyday changing society. The Ball State Tech Center offers a variety of workshops that can help students in their professional careers. Brittany Carlin has more information about those workshops. We'll talk with Jen Eber. Tech Time Supervisor here at Ball State University's Tech Center. She taught a wonderful presentation about Lynda.com and is hoping to get more students involved with Lynda.com because it is a wonderful resource that can help them not only today in college but also in their future. And Lynda.com is a free resource to faculty, staff, and students on campus. A lot of people, believe it or not, after all these years have not heard about it. And so it's a really great resource for them professionally, academically, and uh, personally, so they can use Linda for their coursework. Uh, the students can to help learn. If maybe they have a project that they have to create and they're having some issues with it. Maybe they don't know what software they need to create a web design um, or a website. And so they don't know what software to use or exactly how to use it. Maybe they're stuck. So that's a really good reference for them that they can go to Linda and they can watch either learn about an entire software suite or just about something specific. Maybe in Photoshop they need to learn how to layer a photo and so you can watch a video just on that. Our Linda rep, she's going to be coming onto campus tomorrow and she'll be doing sessions. She'll dive in a little academically, professionally, and personally. And so she'll be here on campus uh, at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, and at 1 o'clock doing sessions. So. If you would like to learn more about these workshops, you can go to the Bracken Library Tech Center for more information. From Muncie, Indiana, I'm Brittany Carlin, Newslink, Indiana. Now, if you want to take advantage of these free workshops, you can email the Tech Center at techcenter.bsu.edu with any questions and also to sign up. A Pennsylvania Supreme Court justice is stepping down due to a scandal over explicit and offensive emails. The emails were exchanged between friends and lawyers. Justice Michael Eakin's decision to step down today makes him the second member of the state's high court to quit over the past 18 months. Eakin's decision marks the latest fallout since, General, since Attorney General Kathleen Kane released hundreds of emails to the media and ethics agencies. Eakin has been on the state Supreme Court since 2002. Google is now leading a new push in online security. The company released statistics today that 77% of its online traffic is now encrypted. Google is pushing for all of their online traffic and activity to be encrypted to keep hackers from taking personal data from users. Google is highlighting their push for security after the FBI and Apple engaged in a legal battle over the contents of an iPhone belonging to one of the killers of the San Bernardino attacks. Muncie Central High School students will be taking on their faculty and staff in an event designed to raise money for student athletes with disabilities. All proceeds from the event will go towards Champions Together, an organization that helps schools create unified sports for general and special education students. This is Central's second year doing such an event. Last year the school raised $400 and hopes to raise $1,500 this year. The event starts tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. and tickets are $5 at the door. Coming up next, find out how severe these weather conditions may be. And if we will see them clear up anytime soon. Your full weather forecast is coming up next. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. 
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. They're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Welcome back to News Link Indiana. Rebecca, it's been beautiful outside today. I absolutely have to agree with you. I mean, people were, I saw people outside walking their dogs mm -hmm. and just having a good time being outside. And it's been great to finally get outside since we've had all of that rain this whole entire past weekend. Yeah, that's typical Indiana weather. And of course, I'm wondering if yeah. Mother Nature's going to put us back in our place. Nick, what do you have to tell us? <laughs> uh, I don't know about back in our place because it's all over the place. I mean, even right now, look, this is the calm before the storm. 62 degrees is what we're at. Those winds are coming out of the east around 10 miles per hour. It's pretty cool right now, but unfortunately we got this front moving through. You can see 50 in Kansas City, 48 in Minneapolis. You got Denver looking at 41 degrees. Now if we pull into the state of Indiana, you can see right now 62 in Muncie, 68 in Indianapolis. Shelbysville, you're looking at 70 degrees. Bloomington, you're looking at 71 degrees. Well, here's the big story right now. We got some storms off to our west, a couple tornado watches and even two tornado warnings. This front is actually starting to make its way sl slowly into Indiana. You can see by 1 a.m. the storms will be probably in Muncie, but as we continue to push on through by 2 a.m., these storms will start to break up a little bit, dissipate, but the winds are going to continue to stay a put because we have a wind advisory in effect until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and unfortunately, this whole entire front's going to continue to move on through, cloud skies, then it's going to become clear. So here was our almanac. We had 70 for the high temperature and 52 for the low. Well above average with 49 being our high and 30 being our low. Back in 2012, we set a record with 79 degrees. In 1993, only nine degrees. So we had 73 in Indianapolis, 72 in Lafayette, 75 in Terre Haute. Now tonight, 55 degrees. Thunderstorms will be likely, especially after the midnight hours. Winds will be coming out of the southwest around 15 miles per hour. But the winds are not going to lighten up because tomorrow it'll be 60 degrees, but winds will be out of the west southwest around 25 miles per hour, mostly sunny skies. Here's that seven day outlook you could see Thursday, 57 degrees. Friday, 46 degrees. Saturday, you could say 52 degrees, sunny skies. Sunday, it'll be mostly sunny skies, 52 degrees. Going to start seeing a small warm up by Monday with 53 degrees and 57 with a high temperature on Tuesday with partly cloudy skies, unfortunately. So we will be seeing some wild weather throughout tonight and into the morning hours, and then right. it's just going to be pretty windy out there. Yeah, real shaky weather that we've had lately, and it's really not been consistent at all. What can we really look to as a cause of that? Oh, uh, well, we, uh, we've been having a couple fronts move on through, and, that, and that's probably the primary cause of it. Uh, we haven't had any type of good warming until recently, mm -hmm. so we're going to continue to be seeing some more fronts move on through and seeing some cooler temperatures, especially in the low 50s. And we will be unfortunately expecting some more rain showers, but hey, better than snow in my opinion. <laughs> I feel that, I feel yes. that. Anytime considering when warm weather is going to be hitting us or do you know yet? Um, probably down the road we're expecting for a 10 day forecast, we can be seeing about 70s again. It'll definitely spike yes. up okay. by about Wednesday, Thursday. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. After the break, men and women's basketball teams gear up for a postseason play. And men's baseball prepares for their home opener later this week. We'll be right back. 
Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Josh Shelton with sports. The Cardinals men's basketball team traveled to Nashville to begin the CollegeInsider.com tournament tonight against the Tennessee State Tigers. The Tigers, a part of the Ohio Valley Conference, hold a 20-10 record coming into the tournament, while the Cardinals post a 19-13 record. The CollegeInsider.com tournament, or CIT, is comprised of 32 non-BCS teams not selected for the NCAA or National Invitational Tournaments. This is Ball State's first appearance in the CIT and their first postseason appearance overall since 2002. Now we see Ball State gearing up for the game in Nashville. Getting ready, here's Jeremy Tyler who receives a pass from under the hoop and drops in the three ball. Cardinals within one. Niall Smith though gets the pass taken away from him and the Tigers take off and finish the layup and draw the foul. So that puts the Tigers up and here's uh, Kiapaway. He gets his pass stolen from him and an easy break there for the Tigers. It was the Tigers early and the Tigers often. Here's a pass from all the way to Kiapaway who drops in the three. Ball State sets up a three-pointer here, misses, but there is Trey Moses who gets the rebound and finishes it for two. The current score right now is 44 to 39 in favor of the Tigers. The Cardinals were down 14 to 27, so they're making their way back. Jeremy Tyler led the team at the half with six points and three rebounds, and Karan DeShields nine points for Tennessee State. Now, Ball State's women's basketball team travels to Iowa to take on the Hawkeyes in the first round of the Women's National Invitational Tournament. This will be their fourth straight WNIT appearance, making Coach Brady Saley the first coach in program history to do so. Coach Saley and his team will look to avenge their first round loss in the MAC tournament and improve Ball State's 4-6 WNIT record. They take on the Hawkeyes Friday, March 18th at 8 p.m. and will either play if they win the game, we'll either play St. Louis or Little Rock, depending on who wins that game. So now we go over to baseball, where according to BallState.com, Ball Diamond is open and ready for business. After beating six-ranked LSU in the first game of a three-game series, Ball State lost the next two by a combined 19-9. The silver lining of it all came from starting pitcher Kevin Marnin, who was named Mac West Pitcher of the Week after holding the nationally ranked Tigers to a single run over five and two-thirds innings. Marnin also posted a 1.35 earned run average and recorded six strikeouts last week. The Cardinals will host the Dayton Flyers in their home opener on Friday at 3 p.m. 
So there's a big week ahead in Ball State sports with women's basketball and men's baseball looking to get the get the show on the road here. Right, absolutely. Do we have a little bit of high expectations for Ball State's baseball team this year? Well, the baseball team has beaten a nationally ranked team in each of their last three seasons. Really? Last wow, season it was Kentucky. So I think they're going to be a good team this year. Awesome. Looking forward to the season. Very good. Coming up next, the Bachelor winner, Lauren Bushnell, will not only got the final rose, but something even more unexpected. And are Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford teaming up for another Indiana Jones sequel? Get the full story from Newslink Entertainment's Jackie Miller after the break. Got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in the smallest face. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this cocker spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Jackie Miller with your entertainment news. Bachelor Ben Higgins gave the final rose on Monday night, but the lucky girl he chose wasn't the only surprise. Higgins proposed to Bachelor winner Lauren Bushnell and presented her with a $95,000 engagement ring. The handcrafted ring is set in platinum and the total number of carats is 4.6. The Bachelor feature, after the final rose, also announced that the show's runner-up, JoJo Fletcher, would be the next Bachelorette. Her journey to find love will premiere Monday, May 23rd on ABC. The Muncie Symphony Orchestra and the Charles W. Brown Planetarium are presenting Coming to a Solar System Near You on Saturday, March 19th. The orchestra will play familiar songs from popular artists such as The Beatles and Lady Gaga that are synchronized with a visual performance on the dome of the planetarium. The concerts are at 6.30 and 8.30 p.m. Tickets are $15 at the door and $10 in advance and can be purchased at the MSO office or online at MuncieSymphony.org. Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford will reunite for a fifth Indiana Jones movie. The first film, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, premiered in 1981 with three sequels and all four films grossed nearly $2 billion at the global box office. A fifth sequel has long been rumored with different actors taking over the role, but 73-year-old Harrison Ford will return as the famous hero. Walt Disney Studios announced that the film will hit theaters in July of 2019. That's all for your entertainment news. Back to you at the desk. Now, St. Patrick's Day is Thursday, and I have some big outdoor plans, so please, Nick, tell me good things are coming for Thursday. Well, the good news about St. Patrick's Day, it's going to be um, partly or mostly sunny skies. 57 degrees will be our high temperature Friday, 46 degrees, but we're going to start to see a cooling trend by Sunday, 48 degrees, and Tuesday, partly cloudy skies with only 57 degrees, so... 
It's going to be, it really good. is going to be a good day for uh, going Yay. out on St. Patrick's Day, even the night, but you probably should bundle up. It's going to be kind of cold. I hear it, I hear it. Well, that's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night. You've been watching Newslink Indiana in high definition.